The southwest coast of Ireland is a glorious cruising ground. Stunning scenery, breathtaking outcrops and lighthouses, iconic anchorages, intriguing offshore islands, charming, welcoming folk. And outside of the major boating centres, you often have a bay or creek all to yourself. But it's also initially daunting. There's getting there. Long crossings out into the Atlantic, where the prevailing winds can make for a rocky ride. Then there's the apparent lack of facilities over there. This is definitely not the marina infested playground of England's okay. south coast. Simply getting fuel can be a challenge. On one occasion we were told, no chance today. All the drivers will be watching the All Island game. Maybe it would just be easier to drop across to the Channel Islands for a few days. But all these problems are surmountable. And for those who take on the challenge, the rewards are rich and many. Crossing the Celtic Sea between Cornwall and Ireland is always a joy. It's a sea crammed with life. Rafts of seabirds, huge pods of dolphins, and always the chance of sighting whales and even leatherback turtles. Kilmore Quay was my first port of call. A friendly harbour master and fuel available 24 hours on the pontoon. The harbour was crammed with fishing boats when we arrived after a long crossing. But by morning the fleet had put out to sea and it was now just a quiet Irish harbour again. And the only thing moving was the resident harbour seal, fat from years of fish scraps. But on this voyage we weren't hanging around to explore South East Ireland and its harbours. The ultimate destination for us was going to be Dingle and an exploration of the Blasket Islands. The ghost ship is a real nautical mystery. A modern day Mary Celeste, drifting the Atlantic, abandoned for 18 months, lurching aimlessly on the ocean swells. Most of her life she plodded around the Mediterranean. The periodical deactivation of the AIS, coupled with her many name changes, strongly suggests involvement in illegal activities. On a transatlantic voyage in October 2018, unusual for this type of ship, her engines failed. Her stranded 10-strong crew were adrift in the wild Atlantic for three weeks, unable to make repairs and running out of food, until eventually rescued by the US Coast Guard. Mystery surrounds her next year, until a sighting around September 2019, drifting close to Bermuda. She then totally disappeared, until being driven ashore near Cork by Storm Dennis. Nobody has ever claimed her, so there she remains, repeatedly battered by successive storms and now broken in two. Kinsale was to be the true start of our exploration of Southwest Ireland. Majestic and awe-inspiring Charles Fort dominates the harbour approaches. Kinsale's a famous boating centre and an opportunity for us to refuel, top up with water and supplies and to overnight before heading further west. Cruising out from Kinsale Harbour, the first headland is the old head of Kinsale with its distinctive lighthouse. One of the caves has been worn by the sea over time into a tunnel right through the cliffs and on this glass calm morning the temptation was too great. Into the tender to have a proper look, although much to the annoyance of the resident seabirds. The story goes that when the lighthouse was manned, the keepers had tried to get paid the island enhancement to their pay, as the lighthouse was surrounded by water. Good try, but they weren't successful. Baltimore Harbour is a huge, natural, enclosed bay, studded with islands. It's a popular tourist destination and water sports centre, but also still a busy fishing harbour. 
where the catch of the day in the pubs and restaurants comes straight from the fishing boats landing on the quay. There were two particular islands in the bay I wanted to visit. A regular ferry, the Yoka Swan, runs from Baltimore town a couple of miles to Shirkin. But we thought we'd do the crossing our own way. And far more fun. Shirkin's been one of my sort of islands on the hit list. I really wanted to see this place. It's got a lot of history to it. One of the stories is about, from about 400 years ago, when Arab slavers came up from North Africa and actually took the whole population of Baltimore into slavery. Astonishing thinking of something like that. Arab slavers coming to this little Irish harbour. About a hundred people I think were living here then and they were all taken into slavery and never seen again. Anyway, we've come across on the tender. We, we can come across on the ferry. I think we're above the high water mark, but I just want to make sure so just a little homemade anchor here. We'll go and explore. There's a mesmerizing tranquility about the island. Now this is an anchorage for people who really know what they're doing. Just about every other boat round here is either in Baltimore itself or in the bay just off it. These guys have come to Horseshoe Bay. It's facing south, it's virtually enclosed and they've got it to themselves. These are people, as I said, who really, really know what they're doing and have found the perfect sheltered anchorage. You can just sit here and get absorbed by the atmosphere and imagine when the Franciscan monks were here. There must have been dozens and dozens of them in there. The brothers would have been out tilling the fields. There would be plain chant, the bells would ring, there would be prayer, there would be devotion. They would have been a major, major influence on the island. It's a very, very mystical place here. Very powerful feeling to it. Now, this is a sign I've never seen in a graveyard before. Warning, grave digging is a dangerous activity and should not be undertaken by unapproved persons. A good warning. So that was Shirkin Island.